All right, welcome to uh, CBS 8 Studios. Tom Penn, the CEO of San Diego FC. How does that title sound and feel to you? San Diego FC, I love it. So happy to be here in this amazing community and the top sport in the business. So, so far, um, you announced just a few months ago, what's the response been in San Diego to San Diego FC? Overwhelmingly positive and enthusiastic. There's such a long history here of wanting and needing to get into pro sports and you know, we feel like we can heal a little bit of the broken heart from the Chargers leaving town, and we're here to be another major men's professional sport alternative in Snapdragon Stadium. The timing's perfect, the market's great, and we're really excited to be here. Definitely a huge appetite here, definitely the space for it. Why finally did MLS decide to expand to San Diego now? What was the key to making that decision in this moment? Because it had been discussed previously. Yeah, the three things you need is the market, which right. has always been here. Then you need the ownership and you need a stadium. So the stadium's taken care of by San Diego State. Snapdragon Stadium's perfectly built. So what we really had to focus on was the right ownership. And Saquon, the Native American family, stepped up to lead this and we needed to match them with someone else. And along came Mohammed Mansour and the Right to Dream group. They're experts in operating professional soccer academies and clubs, and they wanted to invest in San Diego in partnership with Saquon. So we had the market, the stadium, and the ownership. How did that group get together though? Mohammed, he's not a San Diego, he's not from San Diego. Very disparate parties getting together with one shared vision. How did that happen? Mr. Mansour invested in Right to Dream, which okay. is the top youth academy globally. They started in Ghana, they operate in Scandinavia and Egypt, and he bought that academy, control of it, and said, let's spread this and let's go to America because America gets it. They get what we want to do, more on that. They bring Right to Dream here to San Diego and see it as the perfect match with Saquon. And Right to Dream, let's, let's talk about that a little more since, since you brought it up. What are you doing with that here? Because th this isn't just a team that you're building and plopping into Snapdragon Stadium. Right. You guys are moving into San Diego. You got it. With the, with the Dream Academy. So Right to Dream is a family, a network of professional clubs and youth academies. It started in Ghana 24 years ago, and they've been developing the top young boys and girls in Africa to either go on to play professionally in a professional pathway and they're all over the Premier League and playing in the World Cup or if the kids aren't good enough or choose they prefer they go educational pathway here in America they all go to prep school and then on to college on, on soccer scholarships so you've got this development pipeline of the best kids in Africa also in Egypt and then also in Scandinavia we're going to do the same thing here, where we, we recruit and find the best 12-year-olds, give them the best training, education. We'll have a school on campus at our training facility, so it's a, it's a residential academy combined with the best football, and we can attract the best kids from San Diego and across the border in Mexico. And you broke ground on this just a couple of months ago. Where is it going to be exactly, and what's, what's the vision for this facility? So it's a 28-acre facility out on the Saquon Tribal Reservation. Okay. So we'll be the first of its kind on tribal land. And it's the old Singing Hills Golf Resort, the uh, sprawling sort of hotel that's on the Pine Glen Golf Course, which was the 18-hole uh, par-3 course. We're taking nine of those holes and repurposing them five soccer fields, a brand new 50,000 square foot performance center, plus a residential academy for the boys, a school for boys at, for the boys, and then a best program in class for boys and girls at the Right to Dream Academy. What's your pool for recruiting? Is it San Diego County? Is it larger than that? Who's, you mentioned across the board as well, Baja, Mexico, Mexico itself. How large is that pool? So we get our homegrown territory by Major League Soccer, and that's all of San Diego County, somewhere up into Riverside area, and then we're, then we're down across the border in Tijuana. So we're able to go 50 kilometers into Mexico as our homegrown territory. MLS rules then allow you to recruit nationally at the age of 14. So below 14, we'll stay within our area primarily or exclusively. Then we'll go outside our area for the best kids from all of America to come into San Diego and develop. And you have made your first local signing. We have. How yeah. excited are you about that? Who did you get? 
It was really fun. We've signed a, a hot shot, young, high rising goalie. Uh, Duran Ferre is, has joined us. He's a homegrown product. He played at the Surf Academy. He was on the San Diego Loyal, and he's now staying with us here in San Diego. We'll, we'll find a location for him to train and play this year on loan, and then he'll be a, an indication of how we want to be the club of choice, the destination of choice for all the homegrown kids from this area. Uh, that is quite a goal, and we do have quite the soccer community here. I mean, one of the things that's been mind-boggling for people who support soccer in this community for years is we get these great ratings for international. It's, it's just taken so long, yeah. so uh, they're glad MLS is finally here. Um, let's start off with first, what are your goals off the field? What do you want to see happen? What are you looking to build here as a soccer community? Yeah, we, we've promised to be a club for the entire community, the entire region. So not just the coast, not just downtown, what outsiders might think of San Diego, really the entire county the entire region and that's why we've really embraced this idea of being a club that reflects all 18 cities in san diego county we've been purposeful about representing all 18 cities so we're going to go in 2024 on our chrome ball tour where we had at our initial press conference we had this amazing magnificent one of its kind chrome ball that was built with the names of all 18 cities yeah. on the ball we're going to take that ball to all 18 communities and activate around it, where we'll embrace the football culture there, we'll embrace the art world there, and we're gonna actually do an artistic uh, event over all 18 of those places where we're gonna have this really cool representation of San Diego football and art culture at the stadium. So is it safe to say that your kind of your marketing vision is evolving with that as you reach out to the community, talk to people, get feedback, do these projects that we don't know what the final product of your, your vision is as far as your visuals and who you are? Well, we've announced sort of our visual identity. Okay. We were able to do that with uh, by announcing our crest and right. our colors, and we're gonna be chrome and azul as our color palette and then reflect the colors of the community. So that's why you get the various mm -hmm. colors of San Diego. Um, but we wanna be a club for and by the community, and we wanna have a deep, deep impact in the community. And that only comes from really embracing one-on-one -on -one the different supporter groups who are propping or coming up and expressing their love and dedication and commitment to our club and we'll work in collaboration with them with exactly how we how the rubber meets the road here and how we embrace our audience and our various communities you have kind of a mission statement that speaks to all that it's woven into one can you talk about that as a mission brand and a statement a, a little bit more you've kind of touched on it already yeah, it's a bit of a, a a theme of what we're trying to do here so our crest has this cool symbol called the flow in the middle of it. And there are 18 distinct lines in that symbol. And you see how they kind of weave together mm -hmm. and how there, there's, dynam there, there's dynamism there, how we're all weaving into one. We wanna take this entire community, bring it together around their love for this sport. And then we wanna shine to the world. I mean, we wanna represent San Diego, much the way the Padres represent C San Diego nationally yeah. in the baseball world we have the chance to represent greater San Diego globally because this sport is beloved everywhere. We all know that. The World Cup is coming in 2026. So how do we wear San Diego across our chest and represent San Diego excellence to the world? That's what we're about. You know, you did have a loyal group of fans, not to you know make a play on the name, but the San Diego Loyal developed a pretty solid following. Yeah. They'd done a lot of outreach. They had worked their way towards hopefully becoming that team that you guys ha had become, that the San Diego FC took that place. Um, do you look at it as a challenge to win over those fans? Do you think they're naturally gonna join you? Are you actively recruiting them? I is there any issue winning them over to you? So we've got the Loyal, you've got the Wave. Yeah. What wonderful success stories, each in their own way. And San Diego is such a big place. There's plenty of room for all of us to succeed, and we want to see all soccer elevate and succeed. With regard to the Loyal, we've had great dialogue with all levels of the Loyal, okay. from their, their owner, Andrew, through their executives, who we've hired many of, their, or many of their folks, and then to their supporter leadership. So their supporter leadership have just done such an amazing job of representing San Diego in the USL, the second division. Well, now we're first division, and we're, we need to earn 
those relationships. We need to earn the mm -hmm. respect and trust of their leadership. And I think we're well on our way to doing that. And you know, we're going to work collaboratively with anybody who's proud of San Diego and wants to take on LA and every other market in this uh, in this country when it comes to elite soccer. Yeah, San Diegans are really looking forward to that. I can tell you that much. Uh, you mentioned one of the things that changed the dynamic for the MLS to come in being a stadium, being Snapdragon. What's your commitment to Snapdragon? Is it is it long term? And the reason I ask is I, I've watched expansion over the years. MLS kind of has a model: twenty two thousand or so seats in a stadium. That's what LAFC, where you came from, has. It's a significantly bigger stadium. Is, is that the permanent home? It is. It's okay. the permanent home. We've signed a long term lease with the university. We're super excited to be there. We like the capacity. It's thirty five thousand, and that's right sized for the amount of demand here in this marketplace. We expect to sell out. We're engaged right now in selling our premium products, our suites, our loge boxes. We've come up with a new product right down on the pitch, on the field. And so we're engaging with our audience now and starting to get firm commitments on various uh, premium seat products. And that process will continue through all of 2024 as we sell the house out and, and onboard our season ticket members and continue to build our base to where we really represent the whole community. Uh, are there any issues with the stadium that you think could be improved? I, I say that because some fans, there are concerns about the uh, Eastern seats, yep. midday games. Is there any ability to work on the design? Are there sales to provide shade, that type of thing that you see in the design that could be incorporated in the future, something like that? Yeah, so 90% of our games are gonna be played at night. Okay, well that's a solution right there. It's a non-factor for us. If you look with the new television arrangement on Apple TV, mm -hmm. those games all occur Saturday nights, Wednesday nights. So it's almost all in the evenings. Um, you know, as far as like sales or those kinds of solutions, that might work in your backyard, but it's hard for 35,000 yeah, people. It is. So, you know, but uh, it's, not our, it's not an issue for our matches. So at Snapdragon, so we're not going to be putting sales over it, obviously. We don't need those games at night. But what kind of tangible differences will people see for a San Diego FC game? The university built some of the best premium spaces in all of college football, but really in pro sports, all those clubs. So we want to activate those in a different way. We're also adding new premium inventory right on the field. So we call them pitch boxes because we call it the pitch for right. soccer, right? And your feet are right on the grass. These are eight seat loge boxes that we bring in just for our games, plop them on the field. You're able to sit with your feet on the grass. Like if you go to an NBA game, your feet are, feet's on the, your feet's, your feet are on the wood. Any way you cut it, you're in your own box with your own amenities. You got like your little mini bar there and you're right in and on the action. It's uh, one of a kind in pro sports. That sounds like a fun upgrade for people who, who can get those. Just overall, do you have, have you figured out yet um, price tiers? What's the average ticket gonna cost? What's the experience gonna be like? How do, how do you make it affordable for like a family of four? Yeah, so that's a wonderful question. We've really focused on having enough affordable tickets. So we're gonna have over 6,100 tickets that are $40 and under. Okay. And then we're also gonna have seats on the field that right. are quite a bit more than that. Yes. So a wide range of experiences that reflect the wide range of this audience. Um, and, and then in the north end of the stadium, what's the student section for San Diego State? That's the supporter section. Right. And if you've seen any MLS games anywhere lately, you see that that, su that supporter section roars. It's general admission, they sit wherever they want, they're waving flags, they throw beer when they score goals, and they sing the entire match. So we can't wait to build that audience that brings that whole place alive. Just All right, let's talk about on the field vision, okay? You came from LAFC, a very successful franchise. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe what they've done well that you can uh, be inspired to do here. And, and one big question everybody wants to know is, are you gonna sign a big name? Or yeah. Are we gonna see a big name on the field in San Diego in 2025? The long-term vision for the on-field product is that we're going to be young and dynamic and exciting and we're going to take advantage of this pipeline of really talented youth from all those academies yeah. that we talked about, okay? So that's for the long-term. But we can't start that way mm -hmm. because we're going to take a while to build up our youth pipeline. 
So yes, we're going to be very active in looking for significant impact players right away. Um, those we call designated players because right. you can pay them whatever you want right. and and there's a pretty good one in Miami that just signed. Yeah, yeah. Not, not bad, not bad. Yeah, but uh, made a little bit of an impact. Made too, a little on the field impact. And off. <laughs> so we will uh, bring on our own sort of versions of stars, uh, mix them with the best youth, and build this in concert with the broader Right to Dream network of academies and clubs. Uh, so. Many established football clubs have those those programs. How quickly do you think you can develop that pipeline? So you're talking about you have a buffer zone, uh, at least a couple of years of mix and matching, bringing in players uh, from uh, from other places. How long until you think you're really seeing the product of the pipeline? So part of the pipeline is already built, and there's these active academies in Denmark and Scandinavia that are throwing off super talented players that are playing on the team in Denmark. FC Norgeland is one of the top teams in Denmark. They're one of the youngest teams in the world. And we're going to have the ability to build our initial roster in concert with that club over there. Okay? So we're going to get immediate benefits. What's going to take longer is to home grow all the talent right. here from our region because we're going to start with 12 year olds because this is this isn't just find the best 17 year olds, throw them together and then let them go professional. This is much more purposeful to find the best raw talent and character at age 12 and then develop their character, develop their football talent and education, all three together and then mix them with the other players from other countries and you've got something special. You have a pretty diverse background in professional sports and you were at LAFC, so why? You know, this is this is a brand new startup. You, a, a team that just was in the championship game again and had won the championship the year before. Why start for scratch in San Diego? This is such a perfect market for this opportunity. First of all, do you ever have to ask why San Diego? No, no, I don't. Honestly, right. I love it here. But you were in Los Angeles. This was a big change for you. It has to yeah, be. Well, yeah, it's it's a special place, and it's the chance to have macro relevance. Uh, Everybody's aware of, not everybody, but most people are aware of who we are and the excitement this is going to bring. I so look forward to realizing that potential, mm -hmm. you know, delivering on that promise for this whole market. And when we do, it's just going to bring the whole community together. Nothing brings the community together like pro sports yeah. properly executed. I mean, just look at the Padres when they're in the playoffs, this whole town's going nuts. Not the town, the whole region. Mm -hmm. That's what we're after, is to plug into the entire region and deliver something special that everybody can be proud of. Did, you know, again, we've talked, San Diego's been discussed as a potential market for MLS for a long time. Yeah. Um, I have to ask, did the Waves' success, did that push it over the top, the decision-making for MLS to move here? Did that play any role in it? Because they really did make a splash. I think it, it helped our outside investors. I think it helped the Mansours realize just how special and deep the love for soccer is in this community. Because when we came to visit, uh, the core group that came, we'd go to the wave match and you'd see it and you'd feel it and you couldn't believe what was happening in women's sports. And it's so great to see their success. Uh, and there's, you know, Alex Morgan means so much to yeah. this community. It, it makes it more present and tangible what we can do in the men's game, similar to what they've done in the women's. And then I guess finally, how important was it to find Sequan, a partner situated the way they are? They, they have some property. They have definitely name recognition yeah. here. They're invested in the community. How big of a role did they play being the local entity in bringing this franchise here? This is a joint venture. It's effectively a 50-50 venture. And what do you need in a partnership? You need complementary skills. And what Sequan didn't know was how to operate a pro football club. You know, how this whole global soccer world is complex. Right to Dream has that nailed. Right. What Right to Dream didn't have was local connectivity. Well, how do you get any more local than Sequan, right. the native ha inhabitants of the land, 12,000 years? Um, and they're so well respected here and so on the move as a big family, right? They have 
such an impact and they want to use this as a platform to improve their community. So we have the community angle, the football angle, you put those two together and it's just got huge potential. Tom Penn, CEO of San Diego FC. New to town, welcome. I, I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you've found a place to live. I, I know that could be a little bit of a struggle these days. Whew, it's expensive down here. It, it really is. I wish you luck in finding something good. Thanks for your time. Thank you.